there was a meeting, a music meeting, and the idea was that uh, when they played records at WKRP, they'd be what's called sound alikes. It would sound like the Beatles, but it wouldn't be the Beatles. And I said, then, then we really can't do this show. We really must stop right here. Uh, that's not good. We got to play real records. They said, oh, well, that's going to cost money. And I said, no, we got to do that. And so we looked into it. And actually, I could buy what was called a needle down, where maybe, maybe I could get 17 seconds of Pink Floyd for $3,000. And if I use like two two pops like that, that's six grand. My cast wasn't making a lot of money. I wasn't either at the time, you know. I, I mean, we were blessed, don't get me wrong, but not crazy money. And uh, that came a little later, but uh, I was able to get these real records uh, on. And I think it made the show. And in fact, uh, there came a time in our second or third year, there was a strike, a Writers Guild strike, as I recall. And so when we went back on the air, we were literally shooting shows that were going to be on in like 10 days or 12 days. It was that tight. And by then, the record companies were treating WKRP as if we were like a radio station. Guys were showing up and giving me, it. you know, they brought in, um, you know, some stand-up poster. Well, I'd take it down and put it on the set, you know? And then the band would see, oh my God, we're on, you know. I was doing product placement just for the hell of it. Bands that I like. Uh, so I started getting all this stuff and be, and, and in fact, we actually broke some records on, on uh, KRP. It was the first time they were heard. By then, I was letting Howard pick the old kind of rock and roll Pink Floyd stuff, and Tim was picking the Commodores and all the kind of uh, 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 black rhythm and blues and all. The station in general was anti-disco. As a matter of fact, we made fun of disco every time, every time we got a chance. But they were really picking it, and, and some records were heard first on, on KRP. But we, you know, groups like Journey, we, we, actually we couldn't afford the Stones or the Beatles or Michael Jackson, but we had everybody else. And this became a huge financial problem years later because the show was just going great guns in syndication. And I was getting a lovely check every August, which made me feel like, I think I'll leave L.A. and go live on a farm in Virginia with my lovely children. And um, then the uh, rights to the music had to be renewed. And that $3,000 needle down now, they wanted $103,000 for it. So that was the end of WKRP syndication. But I, I can't say I would have done it any other way. But suddenly we just disappeared. 20th Century Fox acquired the MTM library. I think they were the third owner. And they decided that uh, they could make money selling the first season. But they, uh, and they brought, uh, they had Lonnie and Howard and Tim and me. Uh, we went to New York, went on the Today Show, did a bunch of interviews afterwards, but I could tell uh, DJs were calling in. Uh, we were doing these interviews that would then be live on various radio stations, and they said, hey, you, you know how badly these shows have been cut up. And I said, you know, not really. I hadn't looked. And they said, it's a mess. So I knew it wasn't going to sell, and it didn't. And so uh, 20th Century didn't go on with the second, third, or fourth year. Uh, I was very disappointed because I shared in the profits of these things. And also, I loved the show, uh, but in that order. Anyway, uh, uh, when the Shout Factory, they were able to keep most of the original music 
because their negotiation wasn't to play it on a cable or network. It was just on uh, CDs. And these guys also at the Shout Factory are old uh, music guys, and they knew how to make contracts, and they were interested. At 20th Century, you know, nobody really wanted to put any effort into it. Uh, so God bless the Shout Factory. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that had that uh, arranged for us to be honored at the uh, Television Academy, where I for uh, where I saw cast members, some of whom I hadn't seen in since 1990.